Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here with episode 52. And today we're going to talk about AI in the environment. So you guys know that there's a lot going on environmentally right now, right? For example, much of the West is on fire. And one of the great ways that's available now to help manage and contain these wildfires is all of the satellite data coming back to Earth. And that satellite data, because there's so much of it now due to all of the satellite launches over the last 10 years, there's so much data coming back that you got to use AI to analyze that data. And using AI also really speeds up the processing, refinement, interpretation, and distribution of that information so that they can get that information out to first responders as quickly as possible. You're probably aware that these wildfires have gotten so big and so numerous that it's unprecedented in modern times in the Western US right now. There's almost a hundred major fires burning most of them in California, Oregon, and Washington, and accurate, up-to-date, uh, AI-driven data is essential to help fight these fires. So that's one example where AI is helping manage the environment, and this is a very active, very current example. But there's others. As you know, a lot of the satellites that have been put up look at different aspects of the Earth. So some of these satellites do look for fires, and that's the ones that are helping with fires. But there's other satellites that have been put up that measure snow cover, snow pack, and especially monitor uh, the Arctic and Antarctic regions to determine how much loss of ice is occurring. This is super critical for a number of reasons. First, much of the world's fresh water is locked up in these ice caps. That's one point. Secondly, uh, rapidly melting ice increases the uh, depth of the ocean and causes submersion of low-lying areas. And once salt water gets in, it ruins the groundwater and you don't have drinking water in those areas anymore. Not to mention the infrastructure, right? Roads, bridges, all that stuff, fields, um, uh, commercial buildings being underwater. This is a very serious subject because very close to the coast, on both coasts of the U.S., are very, very high population densities, and this is true of most of the countries in the world. So uh, these satellites are very important to monitoring what's happening with ice in the oceans. And again, it's an avalanche of data, and they're using AI a lot to analyze, interpret, and share information about all this data that's coming down. One recent example of this is that um, where glaciers are retreating, glacial lakes are created where um, the glaciers, when they reach their maximum point, piled up rocks and it created a barrier that holds water. And then when the glaciers start melting and retrieving, retreating, sorry, um, the uh, low-lying areas will fill up with these glacial lakes. The tricky part is that the barrier, the terminal moraine barrier that's holding this water back is very loose and very susceptible to erosion and breaking down. So there have been a few instances where one of these glacial lake dams has burst and flooded out the whole area below it and put lives at risk or killed or injured people. 
And so uh, NASA undertook a study using AI of these glacial lakes, and they just published these results. And the, there's more glacial lakes and greater depth and greater area of these lakes than ever before in history that they know about right now. The first environmental satellite called Landsat-1 was put up in 1972. So really the environmental record goes just shy of 50 years with being able to observe the earth at a macro level and understand these kind of changes. So it's relatively new, but yet 48 years is a long time now and has created a very substantial database of changes to the Earth during that time period. And because there's so much data and it's over such a long time period, you really have to use AI to look at the breadth of all this data and identify changes. And really, when it comes to environmental science, which is a great career path, by the way, for all you guys in high school or college, environmental science is a great career path to have job security that won't be automated out of existence and do work that benefits the earth and people. Great career path. But um, to look at 48 years of global data from many, many, many satellites, um, both launched by the United States, by Europe, and China, and Russia, and many other countries, um, you got to use AI. And AI is ideal for crunching these kind of large amounts of data. Why? Because all this data is relatively structured, right? It's all pictures, it's all video, and that's relatively structured data, and AI is terrific at identifying changes in commonality in vast, vast reaches of data that's all structured the same way. So uh, NASA does a lot of this work. NASA is, of course, another terrific career path because you're on the cutting edge of science or you're on the cutting edge of building things. We're talking engineering and actually building things. So not everyone that works at NASA is a scientist. Not everyone is an engineer. Uh, many are, of course, but they have people who just build stuff. And uh, you can get the opportunity to build a rover like uh, the Perseverance rover that's on its way to Mars right now, or you might help build a satellite or a lot of other stuff. So another very, very interesting career path uh, for you guys thinking of changing your career just starting out or still in school. And I'm going to be mentioning these uh, try to every single video to help steer you away from routine jobs that are highly exposed to automation and point you in the direction of jobs and careers that are much less sub subject to automation. So thank you for watching. Keep an eye on uh, nasa.gov. They have a lot of stuff all the time about the environment and remote sensing and AI and data interpretation Great, easy to read stuff. Talk to you on Saturday.